Hi everyone, Shashank this side. I hope you all are doing well today and safe at home. As you can see on my screen, I am recording another video with Systems Manager Parameter Store. And with this video, we will learn how to integrate Systems Manager Parameter Store with Cloud Formation. Now, this is very useful and important. Cloud Formation, as you know, it's an infrastructure as code model tool or continuous delivery tool where you code all your infrastructure resources within one template and execution of that template creates all your AWS resources as per your requirement. So what we are trying to do over here, nowadays we create a template, we provide all the parameters like VPC ID, subnet IDs, AMI IDs and rest of the related stuff within the template itself and call all those parameters as a reference while creating the resource within template. In that case, you have to edit your template as per your requirement again and again. With this video, integrating Systems Manager Parameter Store with Cloud Formation, we will be trying to modularize our Cloud Formation template in a better way. How to do that? I'll show you in a bit with my practical demo. So as you know, Parameter Store from Systems Manager help us to store all the parameters like instance type or password manager or all the related stuff that we want to store as type of parameter, right? So imagine we define all our parameters like instance type, VPC ID, subnet ID, AMI ID in parameter store, call that param parameter store as a reference in cloud formation template. So in that case, you don't have to touch your cloud formation template again and again. You don't have to modify your template at, at all, right? So Within parameter store, we will be storing all the values, referencing all those values within our cloud formation template, and that will going to execute our resources. I'm not a good diagram maker, but I have tried my level best to make you understand how the workflow happens. So let's go through the diagram. And after that, I'll show you the practical demo. So we have a user or a set of user, which basically works with cloud formation stack trying to upload a stack on CloudFormation console. So we are trying to create our EC2 instance within certain VPC, within certain subnet, as an example, let's suppose. I'll show you the template right away. So all the parameters that we have defined, like VPC subnet, subnet ID, VPC ID, subnet ID, instance type, AMI ID, key name, in my parameter store. So once my user will upload a template to a stack, the stack will call all the parameters present in my SSM parameter store, like VPC ID, subnet ID, and all those related stuff. Once it grabs the value, the template will going to execute and my EC2 instance or the resources that we are trying to create will get provisioned with the help of cloud formation console. So in that way, we are not going to edit our template. So template will be considered as a static file instead of dynamic. When I say dynamic, which means you edit your template again and again as per your requirement. So I hope this clears a lot in terms of the concept of parameter store again with the help of uh, cloud formation template. So we are trying to integrate two of the different services so that we can make out a modular format for our continuous delivery. So let's go to my cloud formation template where I'm trying to create an EC2 instance with the help of all parametric values like environment name, VPC ID, key name, instance type. And I'm calling or referencing all these parameters within my resource section of EC2 instance creation like instance type, key name. I'm explicitly giving image ID and subnet ID and group ID over here, the security group ID. Now, don't you think it's a tedious task where let's say you're trying to create uh, multiple EC2 instances every day. So there is a requirement coming every day or there's a requirement of onboarding customers every week. So you have to edit this template as per your requirement. So obviously that's not a good practice to edit your base template again and again. So for that, we have something called systems manager where we will be going to parameterize 
all these values within systems manager parameter store and calling all those values within this template so that we don't have to edit this template again and again as per our requirement. So we are trying to follow more modular approach with best practices. How can we do that? So for example, if you go ahead and run this template, you will be able to create EC2 instance right away. But I want to make it more modular. For that, I need few of the informations like subnet ID because I'll be going to parameterize VPC, key name, instance type, even my subnet ID, image ID for this video with the help of parameter store. So for that, let's grab few of the values from my AWS management console like key name then we require subnet id i'm just naming the parameters that i'll be using in systems manager image id then vpc id what else we need uh, we have all we already have key name subnet id image id vpc id and what else we require let's go to aws management console first of all we'll grab the key pair name there we go that's the one then let's go to instance and i'm going to grab a random image id from launch console so generally we create custom image and use custom image with all our software installation everything for provisioning of our EC2 instances. So this is my AMI ID. Let's go to VPC, grab the value of VPC ID and related subnet where we'll be provisioning our EC2 instance. This is my subnet ID. Okay, so um, I don't think so. We require much more from here. Let's go to our template, VPC key name instance type which is very important. So let's grab our instance type. Let's go with t2.micro. Now we have all the values that we'll be going to use in parameter store and calling that in our cloud formation template. Before modifying or making some adjustment to our cloud formation tem template, we'll be creating all these parameter in parameter store of systems manager. So let's jump to our AWS management console. This is my systems manager. And in application management, we have parameter store. I already done a demo of parameter store with my previous video. So please watch that on how to use parameter store or what param parameter store is all about within systems manager. Let's create parameter store. Now we'll be doing a copy paste, a quick one. That's the key name. That's the name of the parameter. We'll be going to use string. You can give the description as well, the text value, and remove this. That's our first parameter. Same way, we'll be creating another parameters like subnet ID. And let's grab these. I'll give right away a subnet ID just for easier to understand, create parameter. And again, you can do all these things with the help of CLI. I'm not using CLI for this video. Just wanted to make sure this should be very simple and clear enough for understanding. That's the AMI ID. Using CLI, again, uh, th that is my perception. If you use CLI, it's better first to understand how the management console works, like a manual step. And then if you are comfortable enough, then go for the CLI. Again, that's my personal opinion for learning things. And this is the last one. There we go, all the parameters has been created. Now we have to call all these parameters except this one, the Windows admin password. This, is, this was from the last video. So we'll be using rest of all the parameters. 
how let's see that let's go to our cloud formation template now description aws type now here the interesting part comes into picture where you have to use systems manager syntax to call your uh, vpc ids and submit ids and all those things for that let's use aws colon colon then ssm then parameter parameter value and keep the value like this we don't require id over here same way copy this because this will be going to remain same for all for this let's do for instances let's remove this value right away we don't require that we'll use this value as normal string i'm going to introduce another parameter like your subnet id let's give this as subnet id and for subnet id the value if i remember it correctly it's aws ec2 subnet and there will be one more parameter your image id which is image id and for this again uh, I, if i remember it correctly it should be image id now here you can see you created this template once you don't have to touch this template again this will be considered as your static file across your environment and you just have to go ahead and edit your parameter stored this is the better way because uh, if you give one space in json or yaml that will going to give a syntax error so that's why i prefer not to edit things within my template now there are like few modification again i have to make over here so the referencing values instance type is instance type let's see the name then we have subnet id key name is uh, where is key name key name is key name and subnet id let's refer like this image id let's refer like this we can use security group id as well so that's totally depend on our requirement I'm just trying to show you how you can make your cloud formation template more parameterized, more modular in nature. So the editing of this template is done. Let's go to our cloud formation console. I'll show you how this will be going to work. Let's click on create stack. Upload the template from your local. This is going to verify from background. Click next. Stack name test, environment test, image ID. So we have to grab all the values that whatever we have defined in parameter store. So let's copy image ID, instance type. I'm just trying to copy paste uh, just not to make any kind of spelling mistake because I do a lot of spelling mistakes while writing. Sorry for that. Submit ID. And last is my VPC ID. All the parameters are over here. So you see, you don't have to define everything explicitly. So while creating or uploading a stack, you are not going to touch your cloud formation template. You just have to touch and modify all your values, whatever you have written as per your requirement within parameter store which is one of the good thing that I found over here. Next, create a stack. So if everything is correct, we have given all the values correct, then this will be going to create our EC2 instances. And here we go, we got the ID of EC2 instance here. Awesome. So if you go to the output section, we are not calling any output. Here you can see image ID, it has grabbed from our parameter store, 
instance type, then key name, subnet ID, and VPC ID. So you'll be able to see all your parametric values that has been picked up from your systems manager parameter store within parameter section of your CloudFormation console or template. So this is done. Let's go to our EC2 instance, cancel and exit. And we have our one instance created successfully with all the correct parameters like VPC, subnet ID, and you can see like, uh, let's compare the subnet IDs, CEB1 and VPC0039. Let's go here, CEB1 and VPC0039 T2 micro, and this is the AMI with the key name. So I hope this clears a lot on how to integrate your systems manager parameters to with cloud formation template. And to be honest, this is one of the good feature that AWS has provided to us because editing your template and again and again, it's not a good practice that will be going to create some issues while creating your environment. And you know how dangerous as cloud formation script is all about. It can create everything in one go. It can destroy everything in one go if you are going to create any simple mistake. So that's it guys for this particular video. I hope this clears a lot. So just try it out on your account. Try to play it around with cloud formation and systems manager parameters store. Integrate both the services and provision your environment in a best practice manner. If you're facing any issue, just place out a comment in comment section and I'll be there to help you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.